saw Mr. Liberace after the show last night. And uh, he invited me to... Come in, please. Your name, sir? Uh, Scott Thorson. for that portrait? Oh, before you were born. Oh, come on. Well, it was uh, right after the time I almost died. Uh, 1963. Yeah, they, they told me all about your life last night. Yeah, you're famous. Fifteen years ago, huh? No, I'd have guessed last week. That's very flattering. Like what you said about my show. No, I don't flatter people. I'm a very sincere person. You know, you really bridged a generation gap. It's, it's not just blue-haired old ladies who go for you. Would you like a drink? Uh, scotch. Uh, on the rocks. All right. Is it true you have 11 houses? <laughs> I tell you, the press, they really exaggerate everything, don't they? No, I have one above the Strip, another in Palm Springs, one in Vegas, and a condo in Malibu, and this little Hollywood hideaway. <laughs> what are you hiding from? <laughs> Just a figure of speech. This is a place where I can feel really me. Let's hear your story. Well, it's nothing compared to yours. <laughs> uh, I left home when I was 13. Really? Just ran away? Yeah, um, my stepfather you know, gave me a hard time. Uh, I guess I gave him a hard time, too. And uh, so since then, I've just been knocking around, kind of uh, looking for the right break. Have you ever had scotch before? <laughs> no, not really. Why don't we switch? This is sweet.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Did you like the entrance? Was it okay? I didn't dress like this to go unnoticed. <laughs> and how about that car? Do you like it, huh? You do? Good. You know, recently, I had the wonderful honor of being invited to London to do a royal command performance for the royal family. So I brought back this car to remind me of that beautiful experience. They tell me it's the only Rolls Royce of its kind with a left-hand drive. So naturally, I had to find a left-handed driver to go with it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my friend and chauffeur, Mr. Scott Thorson. Thank you, Scott. You're a wonderful driver. Thank you. I'm glad you like the car. You know, it really stops traffic when I go shopping at the supermarket. <laughs> Especially in this coat. <laughs> Let's say goodbye to Scott, shall we? See you later, Scott. Bye-bye. There he goes. You know, I'm very happy to tell you that Mom is here tonight. Isn't she fantastic for 89? <laughs> You know, she broke her hip last year, but she still gets around, goes gambling every night. <laughs> Isn't that marvelous? You know, we've got a real family reunion here tonight. My brother George will be back on the podium again. You know, George was on his own for quite a while, and he was a very fine musician, of course, but he finally decided that he didn't have quite enough candelabra. <laughs> Now listen, would you mind if I go out and slip into something a little more spectacular? Is that okay? <laughs> I just want you to have a good time on your birthday. <laughs> Here. Woo! <laughs> My name. <laughs> beautiful. You really like it? Yeah, I really like <laughs> it. I think. It's beautiful. <laughs> How can I ever thank you? He'll be here soon, Dad. Why can't he be on time? Like you. Hi, George. Hi, Dad. I, I brought those opera recordings you asked for. Everything you asked for. Who is that man standing there? Oh, come on, you know me. No one else wears so many rings. Let's go. How'd you like that new stereo, Dad? Who is this man? Why does he keep bothering me? Tell him to go away. You seem to have upset him. I'll take care of him. Maybe you better go.
now. <laughs> How was your father? He didn't know who I was. But maybe he never did. You like to go home and watch a movie? Yeah. Can you watch that stuff? It's so fake. I know. But as long as fake looks real, I love it. Some special reason? Of course. So you can stop kissing me goodbye at the door every night. to kill me. What are you saying? No, just listen to me and call the cops, okay? Scott. No, just call the cops. I blacked out. Uh, it happened to me a couple times when I was a kid. Yeah, I called my doctor. He'll see you in the morning. No, no. No, I, I feel great. No, I feel fine. I'm sure. I'm sure it'll never happen again. Whew. No, really, I feel. I feel fine. my business when you drive the rolls on stage and then disappear for the rest of the night. Scott, are you all right? The way you look. I look? I look a hell of a lot better than you. In spite of all that makeup and the plastic surgery, Now, when you're ready, I'll take you home. why you won't see a doctor. Scott, that stuff's bad news. You have to give it up.
You may need help, I know, but I can arrange for that. <laughs> you can mind your own damn business. Scott, I can't take any more of this. Either you give it up or you go. Oh, yeah, what? Are you gonna throw me out? No, I, I don't want to do that, but you can't stay here unless... Well, no, I can stay here as long as I want. I could kill you. <laughs> you ever think of that? Why won't you let me help you? Put me in a fur coat and send me to the loony bin. You've got to take me just as I am. Now, you never had any problems with that before. You have to leave. It's for your own good. Yeah? Well, what am I supposed to do? Go back to being 18 again? Pick up my fabulous career? Bodyguards. I want him out of here. A final word on the palimony suit that's been in the headlines. Liberace claimed yesterday that his chauffeur, Thorson, refused to undergo treatment for a cocaine habit, and after several attempts to persuade him to get help, he was forced to fire the man. Thorson argued that even though he admitted using the drug from time to time, he had an oral agreement with Liberace for his services, and these services included a homosexual relationship. But legal experts agreed that such services amounted to a contract for prostitution, and such a contract is illegal and unenforceable. So for the present time, that seems to be the end of the story. some crazy kid on the make. At least it was something in your life. All right, now. Accentuate the positive. Someone tried to take advantage of you, and you fought back. You proved you're a true survivor. Great. Feels great to have some company again. It gets kind of lonely out there on the road. Really? I thought you'd always have people around. Well, there's my musicians, of course, and my fans, but they're wonderful, but they're not what you'd call real company. It's not like having someone to come home to. Do you know why I asked you to come here? To talk about my career? Do you think I can make it as a movie actor? Well, I don't know. You know, there's an awful lot of competition out hey, there. don't worry about it. This is a joke. A joke? I've stopped taking it seriously. I mean, nobody else does. <laughs> not after three small parts. Look, I know I'm not special, like you. And I didn't expect my fabulous notices to turn you on. But you do, as a personality. You're very honest. I like that, a lot. So. Maybe I can make it as real company. True friend. Someone to come home to. At the end of the road.
Glenn, you forgot to light the candles for St. Anthony. <laughs> Thank you. How are you? You like the material? Feel that? Isn't that great? Uh, oh, it's that marvelous. It's new, you know. <laughs> you look wonderful. I'm so glad you could come. Now, listen, you know, I'm not the real Santa here. No. Seymour Heller. This man. Here he is. This man arranged for me to play at Radio City Music Hall. He's the real Santa Claus. Oh. 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 I love you. I love you. Now listen, you know, after this, I've only one ambition left. You know what that is? To be a sex symbol at 80 like Cary Grant. <laughs> you think I'll make it? You know something? After this, I've only got one ambition left. To be a sex symbol at 80, like Cary Grant. <laughs> you know, I'm having such a wonderful time this evening. I'm almost ashamed to take the money, but I will. <laughs> tell everyone. When we close on Saturday night, I, I want to take a long vacation. I don't want to go anywhere. I just, I just want to stay home and smell the roses. developed a bad case of anemia. Years of overwork. Well, that's what you get for burning the candelabra at both ends, right? <laughs> You're not to worry. I just... I just need to rest for a while longer, that's all.
told you after Scott left and before before I met the best person in the world. I tried out a couple of new friends. Sometimes it gets lonely on the road. <laughs> Thirty years ago, I had to keep my private life private or watch my career go up in smoke. Now, of course, I could go public like Rock Hudson did. Maybe even get a message of sympathy from the president. <laughs> but I don't want to check out like that. So promise me. I'll stay private and you won't tell anyone else until I'm gone. I promise. I want to go out while I'm still on top. The way I feel on stage my music and my costumes and all the people and the audience. Mr. Showmanship wants to be remembered for his shows. <laughs> So when people start asking questions, you know, I wonder why I'm not putting on any, any more shows. You tell them that as soon as I, I feel better, 